Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. Today I would like to explain why I use the Kaplay game library to make games and why you should too. So I've been making tutorials on my channel where I've been using the Kaplay game library to make games in JavaScript. And some of you have asked why do you use this relatively unknown library to make games? And in today's video, I would like to explain my reasons and why I think it you should give it a, a try as well. So Kaplay is a library that makes it very easy to make games uh, in JavaScript. I would say it's insanely productive compared to all other alternatives. I would like to first start talking about why it is so fast to make games with it. First of all, it all boils down to its API, the way it is structured. It has a block-based API where there's the concept of game objects and components. I would say those are the two major core concepts of the library. And these concepts can be explained in the following way. So if I go to the playground on the official Kaplay website, and you can see that we first have a game object called cat that is created using the add function. Maybe I should increase the font. And it is using two components. And these components, each component you use to make a game object, which can be a player, an object, or any other thing in your game, it enables new features and functionality that you get out of the box. So by using the sprite component, you can display sprites, you can have access to uh, play methods, animation methods, etc. By using the positional component, you can position your sprite on the screen. So for example, if I put like 100 and hit run, it's going to move the sprite a bit. And this is very powerful because all it boils down to is to use the components that you need. For example, if I want to create a hitbox on that uh, character so that I can check for collisions, I can use the area component, area component. And just like that, by just adding it to the array of components, I can create that by clicking the F1 key. I can open up a debug mode. And just like that, I have a square that will enable me to check for collisions. That means because I've used the area component, I can store the resulting game object in a variable or a constant. So I'm just going to call it cat. And I can have access to the cat on collide method, which will check collisions with another game object. So here I could, for example, just for the sake of testing, a box, a box, and create a new game object, which is going to use the rectangle component and the rectangle component, as its name suggests, creates a rectangle. So if I do this and don't specify even the positional component is going to by default put it at position zero zero which corresponds to the top left corner now i'm going to add a tag to this game object which allows me to detect it in the on collide and then here by passing the uh, tag of the second game object you want to check collisions with you can run a custom event listener a, cu a custom function every time there is a collision with the box. And here I'm just going to use k.debug, uh, not k, sorry, debug.log, which is the equivalent to console.log to display the, let's say, message collided with box. If I run the code, and now I need some kind of way to, you know what, I'm just going to move the, the, the box a bit. So I'm going to use the positional component and move it by, let's say, two. And by doing just like that, it should uh, uh, to it horizontally, not vertically. So if I do this and uh, uh, I don't have an area component, I need to have an area component in the box as well. And if I do that, you can see a message collided with box. And this is just a nutshell of why it is so productive to make games with Kaplay, because it all boils down to using 
the correct components you need depending on the functionality you need. And Kepple offers out of the box a lot of functionality. And because this is composable like that, it makes it easy to organize your code as well. So a lot of options on the market uh, for game libraries use object-oriented programming. And here with Kepler, you don't really need to create classes. You don't need this overhead. You can just really make your games simply by using this game object structure. You can even add an object, a JavaScript object within your array of components. And then you can use that array to the uh, that object, sorry, to define custom properties. Like I could de define a you know at uh, attack name, attack name like that. It's up to you. Test and don't forget your commas. And here you can access it like that. So you get the box and then attack dot name. And then if I refresh. It's going to display test here or let's say you know sword fire or something like that so that's really what makes kaple powerful now if you look at the kaple uh, website and click on the playground you have tons of examples showing you the various features you can have access to for example a a camera here uh, there are many many examples that you can use to learn the library and it takes not a lot of time to do to do it to to learn the basics of the library there's a, a built-in way of making levels that uses text like that this isn't very scalable uh, for bigger games but even that even then it's good to have this uh, api this ability to create levels like that because it allows you to iterate faster you can in the end bring your own editor like tiled and use that instead i have shown tutorials on how to do that so i have never seen another library in any other programming language propose this kind of entity component uh, system in, a, in such a way that it is very approachable and very easy to use now the downside of kaple i would say is that the performance is not great for many objects. You need to be very careful how much objects you create, etc. But uh, the developers of the library are working on improving the performance. So I would say that if you want a library that is a bit like Love 2D in, in its simplicity, you should use Kaple because it's simple to reason about and you can make your games with it. And before we finish, you can make your games quickly with it, sorry. And before we finish, I would like to just go to the documentation, the actual Kepler.js website. You can see that the Discord, you can join it. It's very active. You can ask your questions, get answers quickly. And here you can see a bunch of other examples of how this API works. So you have a way to add text, a sprite, make the text uh, the game object clickable a bunch of events and etc and etc now finally you might be wondering are there any games actual good games made with it well kaplay is very young in in its <laughs> as a library it was previously called kaboom which is relatively still young compared to phaser and other even game engines like unity godot etc but there is a game that is relatively well made and i would like to present it so this game is called Clickery Clickery Hexagon, and it's on new grounds. So let's play that game, and you can see how it looks like. And it's made with Kaplay. So this is the loading screen, and it's loading, etc. And this is custom made, by the way. And then it tells you if you want to sign in or not. I'm not going to sign for this showcase. And I can click to start the game. So it's a simple clicker game, but there's a lot of polish in it. So you click around and then you get access to a store where you can buy stuff and clicks by clicks. And then at the moment, you're going to get a settings tab where you can, you know, pick the sound, whatever or not to, to make the games in full screen, etc. And then save your game as well and you get your stats here. And this game was well received. 
and it's addictive. So here you can see the score. It's a 4.17 on, uh, on 5, more than 9,000 views, and 263 votes. So here we go, a bunch of comments of people playing the games. So this, I would say, is the first game that had some kind of success made with Kaplay. But I would say, don't let this stop you. Kaplay is very approach approachable to make games with. The time investment is not that big to get started. So just try to make simple games with it and then see if you like it. By the way, there is a game jam that is ongoing. And if I click on here, you can see that uh, there is how many days left? Four days left. And there are prizes. So you can win up to uh, Steam gift cards, etc. And the theme is Rebirth. So if you want to join that jam, link is in the description. There's already 75 people who are joining as well. So let's look at their entries, by the way. You know what? Let's not do that yet. But anyway, so that's the reason why I use Kaplay compared to other alternative. To boil it down, it's simpler API, easier API to use, very intuitive, more in line with JavaScript game de uh, developers. Uh, and when you develop web apps, etc., you usually don't use object-oriented programming in the way that Phaser and other object-oriented heavy uh, game libraries in the JavaScript ec ecosystem works. So it's more in line with the way JavaScript is usually written by web developers. And if you're not a web developer, I still recommend that you give Kaplay a try and maybe it will inspire you to make a version of Kaplay in your own language that you prefer. Anyway, that was my opinion, my reason for using Kaplay. And uh, if you're interested, go watch my Kaplay Crash course or my other courses online and subscribe for more JavaScript and TypeScript related game dev content. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in another video. Bye.